I can hear you fine. We've been talking. Just why would I have suddenly not been at? Can you hear me now? Yes. Can chat hear me? Right. Oh, I can't speak for chat. Because it didn't seem to come up for some reason. Right, Maybe let's test camera. that. I'm going to move back a bit so that I'm not just head. <laughs> oh, we only have so much water. We're, we're... Hello, everyone. Um, and welcome to Workshop Wednesday. Sorry, I just thought I'd get the sound sorted. If not, you wouldn't be able to hear me. I'm joined tonight by Matt. Hello. How are um, you? Hopefully everyone can hear me okay. Um, yes, the hand, the headset is um, is, is, is uh, here and um, is, is not being used tonight because... You know what? I spent so much time on Teams and on calls. I decided I would try and find a way to not need a headset on 24 hours a day. Well, maybe not 24 hours a day, but you know what I mean. Um, so, and this seems to be working. So, it's it's freedom. How are you, Jamie? I'm very good. Very good. Right. So, we've got the Mardi challenge. <laughs> yes, we did say. You know. Yeah, yeah. See whether or not Jamie was up to getting the wagons uh, up the uh, up the hill. You thought they were glued to my head even more than in the shower when you go out to pub and restaurants. Well, only some pub and restaurants. And to be honest, that's why there's no hair because when I put the headphones off, it ripped half the hair with it. So I look weird without the fingers, and that's what everyone's been telling me. That basically every meeting has been punctuated by no you look wrong Matt no I can't deal with this tough I love this route which route is this is this return to Mardi or it is, is return, it, return this is the, uh, the the newer one which is the slightly more um, uh, derelict version of the route I should say probably the J94 is such a treat to drive Firing. What have I done with the headphones? They, they literally just say, here, I do still use them. I'm just not using them all day for Teams conversations all the time because they're, they're really nice headphones. But nine hours of wearing headphones is just not good. No, we're off. We're off. We're off. See, this, this, this challenge is more a case of um, it's, it's a marathon, not a sprint. Yeah. This is not a question of racing up the hill. This is about, um, um, you know, measuring your boiler, keeping everything topped up so everything's, you know, in the right shape. It will so you keep maximum steam pressure all the way, because there's a couple of murderous gradients on this on this rhyme. I think yeah. that the goes up to like a one in twenty-seven or something along those lines. Uh, so what's the setup I'm using uh, on for this? I'm just using my normal streaming microphone, um, and I've got my main Logitech speakers. Um, and combined with the, the headphone and the fact speakers are actually behind the monitors anyway, so that shields a lot of the direct audio. Um, Teams is quite good at filtering the audio out. So, and I'm on a Teams call with uh, with Jamie, so uh, Teams can do that. I imagine when I'm doing, if I do a stream, when I do an extreme next, I'll probably be wearing the headphones again, just because uh, it means I've got. You know the audio directly in my head, and I can't. I don't risk any feedback. Yeah. <laughs> oh, there we go. I will admit, I've already had a practice go with this, but more to get the gist of how the locomotive works, more than anything. So. Cheat. <laughs> <clears throat> one in thirty-six. Is it one in thirty-six? Bank being kid fair. It could be. It could be. All I know is it's it's steep. Yeah, it's very steep. Towards it's the sort of like, and it's at the end when you're absolutely the train is is. If you've not done anything, if you've not done it, it's exactly right. The train is in A, and then all of a sudden that goes up to this steeper grade, and you're like, what? Yeah. We're doing alright pressure wise, we're currently at 166 and we're blowing off. Uh, we've got 53% in, 53 in the firebox and 81% in the um, 
in the water tanks, but uh, we've only got 480 gallons to get to the top, so we haven't got much. It's not that long, or a long of a journey, though, but this is another example of where it doesn't have to be a long journey. This is, it's uh, with a heavy train behind you, this is a hard journey. It's really good fun. Yeah. I mean, we're currently on a 1 in 79, and now it's just changed to a 1 in 40. Yeah, if I remember rightly, the 1 in 40 sticks around for a while. It does, yeah. <clears throat> Both of the Mardi routes are well worth getting. Um, they're the same location, obviously, but um, one of them is kind of at the height of the railway, and one of them is kind of like at the, the opposite, at the, the, you know, the latter end of it. And uh, there's lots of more derelictions, closed stations. Uh, it's fascinating to see the contrast between the two. Um, so yeah, no, it's, it's very good. I think there's passenger operations in the first one, and not obviously in the second one. It's great only. Um, but they're a lovely pair of routes. <clears throat> so what's everyone been driving since we last spoke? I wasn't on last week's um, uh, stream because I think I was doing so many other streams. Yeah. No, no, you weren't, were you? You weren't on last week's. No, you did last week's on your lonesome, I think. Yes, you get the battery load though in return to Mardi. Oh, that's fun. Yeah. Derek's mostly been playing Cane Creek. Nice. 395 Bradley, London Underground. There was an interesting article, I think PC Gamer or something like that, I can't remember exactly where, but they posted an article basically talking about the greatest cockpits in video games. And the Bakerloo Line train featured in that list as well, I was quite pleased to see that. No, it's good. Uh, Colour 37, been driving a bit of Cane Creek, nice. Rapid Transit, finished the Cor... Uh, Yeah, that's what I thought they'd be, kid. It's just like, I was looking at it and I wonder what they're doing. And then uh, and then, then saw a picture from our game there and I'm like, no way, that's cool. Been in the GP38, both the ice trains, the 395 and the AC45. Nice. You've been busy, Levi. You've been busy. It's not blowing off anymore. No. Just because I'm having to put water in the boiler now. But I am speeding up. Oh, that's good. That's good. Do you know your ideal fire mass? Yeah, I think it's between sort of 50 and 55 because you can see it's now starting to change. Can you see it? Can't place the bloke who does the voiceover on southeastern high speed. Nah, don't listen to it. Total prima donna. Come on, computer, it's flashing windows all over the place. Make your mind up, leave everything in one place. <laughs> You've almost got pizza beef for get up. Excellent. That makes German trains so much more fun. <laughs> they were already fun to begin with. Cow train MP36 on Cane Creek with off rails. Nice. That's it fast. Nice. What is wrong with my computer? Apologies if there's anything up any problems with my camera, but um It's slow. I've just had a look. It is a little bit slow. It's because Windows keeps um disabling my main monitor uh, and then bringing it back again which means it rejiggles all the monitors around for a few minutes Still some water in still why does it look as if the brakes are full on um, in this uh, loco uh, what makes you think the brakes are full on um, 
Possibly the fact that it says zero. Is that saying zero? Yeah, it's saying zero, yeah. Oh, I think that's because that's train brake, and this doesn't have a train brake. Yeah. It only has a locomotive brake. There is what they call a steam brake. Just reach the one in 37 now. You're getting out of memory error. So it's probably not an out of memory error, New Hampshire. Uh, it says out of memory, essentially, if it doesn't know what's gone wrong. Um, I don't quite know why it does that. But that's out of memory it means out of memory. It also means or something else will happen. Um, so what it probably means is that there's something got corrupted. So in that instance, if you can't, I would, I would probably start copying bits of your install into a temporary folder, particularly try and remember which were the last things you updated or added move them somewhere else and run the game and see if it stops doing out of memory error and if it does then you can look at the stuff and pop it out and at least it'll give you an idea of where to start looking on what you might need to just reinstall uh, and if that doesn't work then I would probably back up your install, trash it do a full reinstall and make sure a basic install is working reliably and then start putting stuff back but depending on your install that might be the mammoth job from heck But normally if you get an error like that, it's because something has gone corrupted somewhere. Hent is promising to love PCB and LZB when TSW2 Rush Hour is released. It will also feature in your streams as well. As it should. And don't, don't, you can't claim credit for learning LZB. That's just basically, I found a way to make the train drive itself. Look at this. Pressure's doing well, what do you think? Yeah, you're doing a good job. I expected nothing less. <laughs> Come on guys, we need to think of a harder challenge. This one was clearly not hard enough. The 90 wagon challenge, yes! <laughs> Let's just keep adding wagons until he fails and then stop. <clears throat> Where's the cat? Outside. Is closed. And that's how it will remain because the cat wants feeding and it will just scratch me up until I feed it. Why do console players get six coaches on HST and PC players get eight coaches on HST? Because when GWE came out, um, it didn't run very well on the console, um, and one of the ways that uh, performance was improved, well, because the number of individual rail vehicles in service mode uh, directly affects the frame rate. Um, so one of the ways at the time to improve that frame rate was to reduce the number of rail vehicles, and didn't want to, we didn't want to reduce the number of services, um, so it was just to make the trains a little bit shorter. Um, now I don't know if that fix is still necessary. Uh, but we need to re uh, re um, rebalance uh, or retest with the uh, with the bigger timetable, um, just to make sure it's going to be okay before making any big changes like that. So, um, but that's why it is the way it is. Welcome, Orion. It's a great now engine the standard snow is next. Called wager or something like that. Found a bit of a struggle with push at the end. Oh, okay. I vaguely remember that baby kid. Yes, there were some pretty good scenarios. I remember rightly on the S and D. Yeah, there was quite a few. Yeah, I remember playing loads of different ones. You know what we need to do? I know what his next challenge needs to be. Although it might be a bit long for a stream. Is Bournemouth the bath? That's a long, that's a long old run. <clears throat> well, what's what really gets you with that one is if you've not been managing your boiler, then as soon as you hit the mendips, yeah. you're in trouble. Yeah. Because you've got a long run on the flat, or on the relatively flat, um, and then you uh, you get in the uh, temple room and that sort of area, and mm. uh, and the gradient start um, biting away at your uh, your your performance and your uh, your train. Yeah. Um, it's a long run to the summit. Who 
think how it says to bath and you get strafed. Oh, that's a Victory Works scenario, isn't it, Bait Beacon? That was one of the ones in one of Victory Works packs. Well, we're getting there. PS5, TSW runs great, it's so much fun, it, does, it runs great on the next gen consoles. Um, it really does. I, I, I quite enjoy playing it on my Series X. Uh, be a high job since you've had it since 2010, try reloading TS with no workshops and no flinch field. Um, or could I send it all to you? I won't have time to look at it. <laughs> um, yeah, your best bet is going to be to, to one of the things to remember when you re, when you reinstall TS is to um, uh, once you've done the uninstall, go into the TS folder and you'll find anything you've changed or added is still in there, and you need to manually clean all of that stuff out. That's one of the uh, ooh, what's that gradient at this point? One in fifty-one. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, so when, what you find is that you'll uninstall it, all that stuff will be there. When you reinstall it, it's all it's all still there. So whichever means is whatever was the bad content causing it to crash, didn't get removed, and then it's still there when you reinstall it. So when you do an uninstall, make sure you go in here and wipe all that stuff um, before you do the reinstall, so that you truly have a, a minimal install. And if it still crashes even on a minimal install, then that points to drivers or hardware. Levi, you didn't expect to like TSW2 as much as you do. That's cool. What's your favourite bit? What, what, what is it that really makes you think, oh, that's what I'm playing tonight? <laughs> well, we're still doing well. You are. I'm impressed. You should do a stream where someone drives a train blindfolded and the other person did it. We did that. Did you? I, I drove blindfolded and Sam guided me. The first one worked and the second one he drove me into a red light, but that's fine. <laughs> the red light was a little bit, you know, almost no notice. It was good fun actually, he really enjoyed it. I think the first one was main specified and I kind of know that route like the back of my hand, so... I don't know if still doing that. Is there Thomas's and friends in the game? No. We'd, we'd like to think that, you know, some of these are Thomas's friends, but no. they're not their friends that you're linking or thinking of. Did you do it with PZB blindfolded? No. No, it was the first one we did, the main specific farm one, and um, we weren't sure it would, how it would work, so we thought we'd keep it simple. We did Leah the second time round. Look at this. I, I, I mean, I've overfilled slightly, but look at that. Look. Doing all right. Yeah. Well, it's it's a little bit lying shallower here. This is where the old engine shed used to be. Yeah. I'm doing so well. I'm actually speeding. It's just showing up. That is, isn't it? Oh, very true, by being kid. Yeah, I didn't think of that. Nigel, your best GSW2 route so far is Capcar. Beats SW, SEHS, and Baker Lou just. Uh, I think Bait of Cathcart, I've seen lots of um, really positive um, feedback on Cathcart and I must admit I'm quite enjoying it. But then I've been playing a bit of Bakerloo line recently as well and um, sort of rediscovering the joy of that as well. 
I haven't gone back to South East and High Street much recently, mostly because I've been doing other things, but uh, I've had the need to go back to Lake Blue lately, so... Oh heavens. Uh, Orion Dandridge is indeed a saddle tank. Austerity saddle tank, isn't it? Yeah. Yep. J94. Did everyone? Uh, did anyone see the um, the GTV YouTube video that I did? That was fun. I was on, I was on like a uh, discussion panel thing on the GTV um, YouTube channel. That well, went well. It launched a little while ago. Um, I'll have to find the link for those of you that haven't seen it. What was that? Yes, you may. I did make you watch it. In debate being kid, and I ask you questions afterwards as well. Was that mean of me? Possibly. Did I enjoy it? Yes. <clears throat> well, to be honest, you've still got the steep bit. In fact, you're probably on the steep bit or getting onto it now, aren't you? Yep. No, this isn't the steep bit. This is the nearly the steep bit. This is painful. But then it's that last leg up to the, um, the, the just at the last bit to the top there. What is your best route in TSW2? That's very much a personal thing. We're going to use testics about what, what you want to drive, really. Oh, well, let the viewers um, give you their thoughts on their favourites. Why is my ears? <laughs> no, it would cause this much consternation. Jeez. I'm lying. I, I know it would cause consternation. Um, I'm just. Um, I, I, I don't need to use my headphones. I've set myself up a way that I don't need to use headphones when I'm on a Teams call, um, which has meant that I don't spend nine hours a day wearing headphones, uh, which I've grown to hate with a passion. As much as I love my headphones. I have grown to hate wearing eight headphones for nine hours a day because I do spend rather a lot of my day on on, on calls. So um, this makes life a lot more ple uh, bearable. But uh, I still wear the headphones for fun stuff. Uh, have you thought about doing a video called PZB when things go wrong? Uh, every time I do a, a video, including PZB, that's basically what happens. Uh, and are you the evil genius behind the bad thing scenario? Um, I think I contributed some ideas to it, but no, gameplay team, great, take credit for it. Signaling the cane, the yellow signal is red. I guess the signal in the junction didn't tell them we were on our way. Give them a whistle, that should alert them. Oh, well, I'll give them a whistle. I hate it with that. This is the signal just near the bridge, isn't it? Yeah. So you bought an external mic and speakers. Well, I already had them, Chris, but I wasn't using them before because I wasn't sure whether or not the, um, the microphone would pick up the speakers. Turns out they don't. So, hooray! Or at least Teams is filtering it out if it is. So. Yes, on the one in 54 at the top now. Whenever I've messed with it before, no, I think the steep bit is after this. Must be. In AR overlay to the headphones. <laughs> Of the top. Do you all ever do live streams like this? We are literally doing a live stream like this right now. I'm not sure what you mean. We do workshop Wednesdays every Wednesday. Um, and then there are other streams. Um, and you can find out via our social media, Facebook and the like, um, what we're doing in any given week. 
But we try and do a three, three or so streams a week. Credit where it's due, you're doing a really good job. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Hmm, it appears the signals have completely failed. The moment of flagging is through. You may proceed through the danger signal and spot the wagons on uh, Murdy Cole Northbound 6. On our 37, the favourite route is Hulk Shepherd of Rainwall, but enjoy all the routes. Anyone you don't know is good. Wow! That's impressive. Uh, is this channel affiliated with Dove Taylor? Is it separate? Um, it's official. Um, Jamie, introduce yourself. What, me, 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 yeah. I'm, uh, yeah, sorry. Uh, so, I, uh, I'm Jamie, uh, I'm the community, uh, or junior community manager for Train Simulator. So I look after our, our community manager, but I mainly look after the Train Simulator side. And I'm senior producer for Train Sim World, my name's Matt. So yes, welcome to the stream. Yes, this is official. At the start of each run, would it be possible to show the route map? Um, I think it's something we try and do on TSW. I, I don't think it's possible to do it on this one. You can before you start the run. Just press 9 and go and have a look. Um, whenever you like, though. Why are you stopping me? Anyway. Right, let's put a couple of brakes on these so they don't roll away down the hill. If not, I'll have to bring them back up again. We're running really low on water. Take the engine up to the water column and fill up before we have to drop the fire. Is Unreal 426 better for consoles in regards to performance? I don't think it's much different. If I'm, I don't think so, Raphael. What it does open up is the possibility for um, uh, for next-gen console support, which we can't do until we go 426. So better in that respect. Now on a one in seventy-five. One in forty-six. Oh, that is bad now. Got nothing behind you. Now I don't have to worry about the water. Might set the road. Yep. Just roll back. Uh, Clinchfield, Rosa, Munich, uh, Augsburg on Sound Xbox this week. Matt, what we featured next week? Oh, no idea. No, I'm just not got a clue. Uh, Scott Strudick, what's the difference between 423 and 426? If you Google it, there is actually a um, the, the Epic do do um, like developer notes, um, but. Um, Practically speaking, not a huge amount, to be honest, because every new feature they add requires extra code to actually use it. It doesn't just happen for nothing. Um, so, um, 
yeah, it's um, sorry, my brain completely flipped out there. So yeah, it, it's um, you know, practically speaking, it's more about getting the under the hood stuff working rather than necessarily adding uh, features. So one of the key ones, like I said, is that uh, 426 supports the next gen consoles uh, properly, um, which 423 didn't. Didn't have any support for the next gen consoles. Oh, and it's got three extra witchcraft supporting to Baby and Kid, yeah. Into the old distance. So distance measured, uh, Michael Wright, is as the crow flies. So if you're going uh, around a corner, well, yeah, if you're going around a corner, um, then you'll flight find from here, and as you go down, it actually takes a lot longer for the distance to go down. And worse, you know, like on Hagen Siegen, when you go around the top at Hagen, you actually find that your distance starts going up for a bit and then starts coming down as you come down the other side. So yeah, it's as the crow flies, not following the track path. Uh, Phew, that was close. I would have liked it, then I would have liked it. It's part of the engine on engine road shed one. <laughs> Sorry, that. <Matt. laughs> nice. Um, is Unreal Engine heavily modified for Train Sim World? It is pretty heavily modified Train Sim World, yeah. It's a genuine joy driving this little tank engine, it really is. Going the wrong way. Uh, in American um, news statistics, probably means um, in percent. Which bait being killed is given about one and a half percent. I went the wrong way. Um... <laughs> Right, there we go. Now uh, I'm right. Dave Randall, we'll talk about what next gen means um, in a uh, rush hour stream. Can you make it in different colours? Uh, no, Ryan, it comes in. Oh, no, I can't remember actually what what it comes with in this one. I know one of the packs comes with a bunch of different varieties of Day 94, but uh, I don't remember what, which ones. Look at that! Yes! There we go! Made it! Well done! When is the next Rush Hour stream? Uh, I don't actually know. I can't remember. Right, that wasn't so hard, was it? I need a brew. <laughs> I am brew. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> That's what you mean, isn't it? Right, so let's move over to our next one, shall we? Didn't blow it up, didn't stall. No. Actually, that was, you know, there was no doubts on that run. He uh, mastered that little loco. Yep. That was that. Jack, rate it from 1 to 10. There you go. 10 being the best. Rate it. Uh, you're a game developer. Why do more indie companies prefer the Unity engine over Unreal? Is it cheaper to use or is it something else? Uh, I don't know if I'd say it was cheaper to use. Unreal is free until you start making serious money. Um, and even then, it's just a percentage. There's no bulk you know, license fees. Uh, um, the only thing I could think of there, um, and it's something I thought of myself when I was been thinking about a couple of projects of my, of my own, is that Unity is based on C Sharp. Uh, which is easier to learn, whereas uh, Unreal is more based around uh, C++, which is a blooming nightmare. Um, so, um, I mean, you don't have to use it because it's got a blueprinting system, but if you want proper, you know, decent performance, you know, really good performing code in some some cases, then it ends up all being in uh, 
in uh, C++, whereas, like I said, in Unity, it's done in C Sharp, which is uh, really easy. Um, so I got a mi someone gave me a minus one. A minus one? That's <laughs> yeah. harsh. Yeah, I've got a hundred out of a hundred, ten. Oh, I've got... Ten out of ten, that was. I've got... That was a spot-on run. I think I've got a hundred thousand. Anyone uh... I think you've driven a steam engine in real life? <laughs> yeah, visually and so forth, in terms of output and everything else, these days Unity can do a lot of what Unreal can do. Um, uh, Unity's out, you know, Unity is really good. Subnautica is based on. Damn right, I'm jealous, Mod P. It should not be a surprise. <laughs> I not hide this. <laughs> look at this. And, look. And worse, we were in a meeting the other day and Jamie started sharing screen photographs. I know, it was hilarious. Was very closely disconnected from the meeting. I was like, what? Stop it. <laughs> Did you see that? How was that? Look. Hello, now before the storm uh, hits, stay safe. And, uh, so we were in a GP33. Eco. What? Where's my needles gone? What's all this modern trash? LED displays. What? Let's <laughs> turn the headlights on dim. Um, it's all set. Step lights are on. The um, the eco Norfolk Southern eco livery is quite nice, isn't it, bad guy? Uh, Norfolk Southern in general, I quite like as a livery, to be honest. Is this a DTM local? I believe it is. Is it, Jamie? I have a feeling it might be. Yeah. I'm gonna go have me a look on Steam. It's a GP33, did you say? Yeah. Norfolk Southern GP33 Eco is travel by train. I don't know who that is actually. Nigel, have DC made a decision on the routes to be included with TS2022? Uh, if not, will they be new, will they be new releases? Um, I don't know the answer to that question. I must admit, I'm so heads down on TSW these days that uh, I'm totally out of the loop. I didn't even know this one had been released, for example. Um, so, sorry, it was only released in September 2020, so, you know, relatively modern. <laughs> um, so uh, yeah, um, best bet would be to wait for the uh, for the announced streams for um, for whatever's coming next. Has Dovetail ever thought about doing more early date routes instead of modern? So most people want modern routes. There are some early date routes like Tees Valley and Leeds Manchester, um, but what most people want is a um, um, is is a modern route. Although I do like uh, Riviera in the fifties. Riviera in the 50s is uh, is lovely. Oh, As is Riedale and Teesdale. Yep. <laughs> that is an amazing route. Oh, this is the Morristown line, isn't it? It is indeed. We're actually running a rail tour. Look, look at that look. Yeah, it is quite. And not only that, I, my favourite one to drive on this bait being kid is the Arrows. Um, I think the Arrow Three is 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 great fun to drive on this route. Yeah, this of of the NJT routes, this is my favourite one. I think. Going into Dover. And then off to Ramsgate. There we go, doors are open.
didn't get the full train on, but uh, I'm sure they can walk through. Doors all shut. You just decided to uh, class 56 would be spot on Hentis, gotta say. This one isn't a dump like the Kent one. Well, that sounds a bit harsh. I mean, it might be right, but. make a scrapyard on that game. So there is an add-on, and actually an add-on dedicated to being a scrapyard in TS1, uh, the Doncaster Works. Which is just heartbreaking. You know, if you've got the interest I've got, Doncaster Works is just utterly heartbreaking. It's uh, all BR Blue stuff being scrapped, isn't it? scrapping BR Blue trains, and it's just, no. No, 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 no. It is good fun though. Doncaster Works is a really interesting shun, uh, shunting yard. That's baked being kids' favourite route, I think. Driving everyone, everyone crazy. So you know, let's let's put the headphones on. Yeah, is that better? Mm. Something by mistake. It looks weird without. Yeah, everyone. Everyone's been saying that in my meetings right lately. Red. <laughs> Matt's back. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that other interloper, he's gone now. I kicked him off the stream. Uh, whatever he said was absolute garbage. You can ignore anything he said. Hashtag the real Matt Pedestal. <laughs> Not intentionally bad guy, no. <laughs> Definitely an improvement. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> hey British Ace, how's it going? I, I had a day in the office today. I know you said. How was it? Yeah. It, was, it was fun, I quite enjoyed it. You know, other than everything going wrong. Yeah. You know, because if you move a laptop that's been perfectly happy at home and running, and you say, well, go in the office and uh, access the network there. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Too but complicated. You're now next to the things that take you ages to access to. Oh, yeah, but I can't access them at all now. <laughs> <sighs> oh, did you, Danny? Were you all there then? <laughs> well, Danny was there, yeah. Danny's there all the time these days, I think. And uh, but no, I had a meeting in the office, and uh, it was uh, no, it was good to meet up with some people. Actually, good to see Danny. Good to see some of the others. Oh, speeding again. I'm still not feeling like I want to go back to the office on a regular basis, but. I think going back in, you know, uh, once a week or something for uh, uh, a meet, a meeting or something would would make a lot of sense. Was Sam there? No. Oh, well done, Terry Bartlett. Oh, that's nice.
If Sam was there, that would explain why nothing works. Ouch. <laughs> Ouch. I'm telling him you said that. <laughs> oh, crack shot. It's good, isn't it? The reflection. Yeah. Uh, Wonky Sausage, uh, you'll get more news about London Brighton in rush hour uh, nearer the time. We'll be doing rush hour streams covering everything, so uh, don't worry. Don't panic. <laughs> uh, so would you prefer to carry on doing the live streams as they are now or how you did them pre-COVID? Oh, how we do it now is much easier. Um... You know, Dimitri and I basically cuddling uh, because we were trying to fit on one camera um, while we awkwardly played the game. It was okay because Dimitri's awesome, but um, this is much, much easier. Did I refill the freezer for Moggy? No. I did find a jubbly. Um, and ice. It was ice I was looking for. Is that why Dimitri left? <laughs> well, unofficially, probably, yeah. Where did Dimitri go in the end? Uh, I think he went to uh, another com uh, games company. I can't remember what, mobile games of some sort, I think. UP train passing. Oh, you mean Luke, bad guy? Um, I, no, I, I don't know what he's doing for a living, but I uh, still chat to him every now and again, and he pops into the stream sometimes as well. Right, all loaded up. You prefer the way we stream now, it looks more professional. Well, the bar was pretty low, so yeah. No, I think we're all a bit more chilled as well. And we all, I mean, we're actually streaming a lot more than we used to as well. Back, you know, before uh, before we all um, went to work from home, it was, uh, it's still pretty low, thanks, Bake Bean Kid. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> um, but yeah, the. Um, Um, I think before we were, might have been streaming once a week. Uh, the beginning of the pandemic, we were five days a week, and then we settled down to three days a week because we were burning everybody out. Hey there, Dark Oral TV, how's it going? Fifty. It's a lovely route, this. It is a very nice route, yes.
Are the old streams available on YouTube? I believe everything is available on YouTube somewhere on the, on the main channel. Uh, Nigel, I think. Certainly everyone we've done since the brand pandemic is. Yeah, I don't know about the older ones, but I imagine they are. They are, are they, Hentis? Yeah, I thought they might be. We are Lloyd's bank train. <laughs> <laughs> it does a bit, doesn't it? It does a bit. David Lee Hunter, he played both Train Sim Worlds and Xbox One. Nice. I think this is my only stream this week, isn't it? Uh, I think so, actually. I don't know how I managed to score that. That's cool. <laughs> well, it's sort of cool. I've, I've got tons of other stuff that I can do. So, it's... Uh, As our signals looking, yep, lovely. Will Norfolk Southern ever come to TSW? I hope so, um, but uh, we've not announced anything yet. Be nice to have a high hood. Yeah, agreed. And one of those ones that they used to use, like that doesn't have a cab. I know. I'm trying to think what they were called. The what? Sorry. They were just like a, an engine, weren't they, with no cabs or anything. Well, no, high hoods had cabs. They were long, more locos. I'm, I'm talking about uh, the ones. I've seen a photo with like a loco, and it's got no cabs or anything. Yeah, they're slugs. Slugs. That's it. Yeah, they're just basically. Uh, they're like the B unit of an F7. They're just power and no control because yeah. you use a slug with another loco. It's got a cab. That's the one. I was trying to think of the name for it. <laughs> of course, I haven't been in the office for so long that uh, I went to find my uh, my pass, and um, yeah, I couldn't, so I've had to get a new one made. How is it a slug, Derek? It's got the cat. Will Mariah's Pass ever be re-released for UK gamers? Uh, I'm not aware of any plans to do any work on that. Yeah, the problem with the BR Class 13 Hentis Rail is you're a bit limited where it can go. They only really ran in one yard. Miles and miles and nothing. Yeah, after shunting, I think Mariah's Pass was one of your favourite things, wasn't it, Babe Beacon? Oh, the loco isn't powered. All the power is coming from the trailing loco. Ah. Pardon? Really? So it's technically one loco, even though there's two. How does that work? Yeah, why would you do that? Tinsley, that was it, Entis, yeah.
You have to put in the class, Matt. See what history the thing has got. I was gonna have got to do that for the austerity, didn't we? Oh, here we go. Looking at the uh, the Steam Store page for it. The Norfolk Southern GP33 Eco is a 3,000 horsepower 4-axle BB locomotive powered by an EMD 12-cylinder blah, 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 Eco engine and equipped with an EMD EM2000 microprocessor control system. The new and innovative diesel is distinctive from front to back, built with a Norfolk Southern Admiral cab and at the rear flared radiators similar to those employed on the SD70s. GP33 Eco meets Tier 3 emission standards and is capable of radio-controlled operations. Visually similar to the GP33 Eco but unpowered, the RPM4C Slug is also equipped with an Admiral Cab and EMD2000 uh, microprocessor control system. So one presumes, therefore, that you are driving the uh, RPM4C. We are, so we are technically driving a Slug. Keep your pass around your neck forever, then you'll never lose it. Nah, I'd still lose it. Have you returned to the office? I was in the office today, Harry's trains. I'll be losing this. Uh, I'll be losing this tomorrow. And then Laura in the office will get grumpy with me um, when I go back and say, "Yeah, you know, you maybe that new parts." Guess what? <laughs> You didn't. Well, by, the, by the way, if you can hear thunder or lightning, that's purely because that's the game actually doing that. So, oh, well. so I'm going outside and you can hear thunder. Ah, uh, mainly used for switching jobs in yards. That makes an awful lot of sense then, because it means you've got basically a double-ended GP33. It's going to have. It's only going to be using all the fuel consumption of one GP33, but the benefit of two ends. You're not leaving the company. No, of course not, Harris Trains. Why does everyone keep saying that? Definitely not. Definitely not. No, just back to working from home. It was just one day in the office for meetings. Probably start doing that a bit more now. Uh, I know, Matt. Why not put your pass in your pocket? Yeah, it comes out of my pocket. Or your backpack pockets. You hear the... I don't always take my backpack to work with me. What I'm going to do is put it on my bedside table. And... Just hopefully I won't lose it if I put it Wear there. it every day for the rest of your life. <laughs> no, no. No, I will keep it around my neck until I go upstairs. And then I will put it on my bedside. And it will stay there until I need to use it. And then I shouldn't lose it. You could just get it tattooed on your arm. I mean, it is just an RFID card. You know, I could just get an RFID chip. Um, you know, get a little bit, you know, implanted here, and um, freak everybody out. That would be rather weird. Wrap it round your phone, yeah. Stick it to your forehead. There's not enough room. I mean, eventually everyone's going to have RFID chips, right? Indeed, Baker. <laughs> <laughs> If the team's working from home, has it made things harder for making routes and trains? Some bits, yes. Yeah, some bits, no. Some bits, easier. Um, you know, I think a lot of the team were actually they found the feet now working from home, and they're preferring it. Um, whereas, um, um, so getting references obviously is basically impossible. Um, but we've been able to uh, benefit from you know likes of Armstrong powerhouses. 
reference for uh, for TSW for audio and so forth. So we've been muddling through on in various different ways. Um, so I think a lot of the team have, have actually sort of found a way to work and they're really enjoying it. No, as Danny says there, not everybody does. Some people um, uh, absolutely, uh, you know, they don't want to work from home and they want to get back in. So, and there's a bunch of people in the office now. Not many, I think it's about 10, isn't it, Danny? I think that's roughly what I saw today. It's been a bit of an accident. Look at this, look. There you go. I'd just like to say I wasn't driving. <laughs> Pentis was driving, apparently. 10 to 15, says Daniel. Yeah, okay. Slowly go all past that. Uh, Kelly, we're going to be doing an island map on the Dublin Cork mainline. Anything is possible in the future. There are no plans at the moment, however, to do a, um, a route in Ireland. Slowly coming in. If we go to a Backman train store, do you mean in America? No. Um, I don't know if Backman have a train store in the UK. I've still gone to their you know, gone to their stands at exhibitions. I think basically Backman stock at, at model railway stores rather than yeah. having their own, basically. Jack, there'll be more news on the Brighton mainline um, at the appropriate time on the Rush Hour streams. All closed, yep. Yeah. Rain's getting heavier. Yeah. Yes, Terry. Uh, I've seen that that uh, Black Prince at Romney's been restored. AC? No, bad guy. I've got a fan down there, but it blows on the microphone, so I have to turn it off. That this is this is the sacrifice I make for you. Yeah, just just saying, putting it out there. Have you seen the weirdest poster ever? Look at that. You see that, Matt? What? Foo furry. You seen that? <laughs> How weird. That is really weird. film about the derailment you just passed. Um. 
Oh yeah, that could be very true. Got S H H S and three nine five zero one two is always passing you as an AI train. Never <laughs> yours. Oops. <laughs> You'll get there. You'll get it. And when you do, it'll be that much more exciting. Make sure you take some screenshots of it. Close the windows up because it's absolutely pouring it down outside. How many more stops we got? And... Uh, this is Morristown. And there's the full route. Look at that. You got all this up here, and all this down. that goes all the way down there. Look, there you go. Which is the old North Jersey coastline. Yep. Fury, of course it is, yeah. I bad. Few, fur few Furry would be a different film. Yeah. Whoa, we all stepping like the crazy. Yeah, it was, yeah. Oh, hey, Glenn, hey, go. how's it going? Long time. I hope yourself and Anna on the moon are doing well. Ten most extreme railroads in the world. Doesn't ring a bell, bad guy, but I've watched a bunch of wacky stuff like that, so possibly. Yes, not bad at all, but I don't. Not bad at all. Big old cup up. She's upstairs on a trek chat. What, she's not here chatting to me? Wow. <laughs> Do send her our regards. Just having an explore. Battery-powered and hydrogen trains powered uh, trains possible in CSW. Yes, and in fact, on the route we were just running, return to Mardi, it comes with a battery electric train. It does, uh, doesn't it? I yeah. think that one is made in a hydrogen train, but... How can you have a Gamma Quadrant? Because Alpha, Beta, Gamma, Delta are the first four characters. It's not Charlie. Charlie is not part of the Latin alphabet. I think it's Latin, isn't it? I'm not sure. I wouldn't know. <laughs> Greek. Greek. Apologies. Another UP train. So the boss used for server names at your place. Nice. In the past, I've used all sorts of things. My, one of my other companies I worked at used um, whiskies. Of course, you know, trying to type Glenfinnan and and other such names <laughs> repeatedly is super annoying. 
Um, however, one of my favourite naming strategies I came up with, I'm sure I'm not the first, was chemical symbols. It works so well because you have an IP address, like the number, like dot one, or dot one is hydrogen, yeah, because of its number. And it also then gets a short name, H, which means that you can always get to your machines with quick two letter one and two letter names and you also know what the right know what the name is based on the ip address yeah. it was just brilliant <laughs> there you go coming in nice and steady now i've been driving quite well such wood <laughs> done Tonight. good right jamie you've done good That's the point, Danny. That's what I'm trying for. <laughs> A good spad on the final station would be spot on. Actually, there's a question for everyone. What's their favourite um, American railroad company? It can be from years and years ago. It can be from now. What's your favourite railroad company? American railroad company. What's yours? Norfolk and Western. Oh, nice. Nice. Because of the J's, A's, um, YB's, things like that. Being kid likes the north of the southern. Danny likes Metro North of the Lear because it's third rail. Yeah, I get that. I get that. Respect. Bad guy's Canadian, so he's going to go with Canadian National. Amtrak. I got to admit, I'm a bit of an Amtrak fanboy. I do rather like the Amtrak trains. Uh, what American company had Pacers? Scepter. They had the equivalent of the 140s, if I remember rightly. Uh, wifey's from Pennsylvania, so you have to pledge PRR, uh, but you've always been drawn to the MLW Pacific Electrification. Nice. Santa Fe. Santa Fe F7s with the war bonnet liveries were particularly nice. Yeah. Oh, someone said nickel play. Yeah, that's a good one as well. Off the Berkshire locomotives. Mm-hmm. Anthony, yes, the Disneyland Railroad would count as well. I quite like the Wisconsin just because it may, it freaks me out every time I see an EWS liveried American train. True. <laughs> I mean, the thing is, with uh, the Disneyland Railroad, Walt Disney was a major rail fanatic. 
if you see some of the history he had of what he built and the locomotives, um, you know, it's quite quite amazing. Hey, look, we're in Chatham. Look at that. <laughs> Man, did you see what Danny just said? Oh, yeah. Atom, it looks good. Oof. <laughs> Truth hurts. Well, the thing is, I can't laugh because I haven't actually seen Chatham yet. So I don't even know what he looks like yet. Last station stop now coming up. Down nice and low, so we get the tilt of the train. I do also I quite like the Great Northern livery, not the the new the, the, the later blue, which was quite boring livery, but the earlier, um, the orange and green. That was quite nice. Oh, did you see that? There's some lightning. Did you see that? Lightning flash there. storm out there. No oh, more lightning. You have to go through a wardrobe to get to Chatham. Yes. Does this loco have a D in physics? Well, the loco literally that um, uh, Jamie's driving doesn't have an engine, so. Uh, um, but yes, I imagine there'd be a D in physics on there. I don't know for sure. I imagine so. Yeah, it was slipping. The Orange Genesee in Wyoming livery, I do quite like Christmas. It's it's one of those that um, initially you go, what the heck? And then it grows on you. It's a bit like painting class 50s in GBRF. You know, once you've got over the wah, 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 hey, hey, what? Um, then uh, actually, like, well, actually, <laughs> I begrudgingly admit. What do you think of the class sixty-nine? I think it looks alright. Doesn't look too bad, does it? No. Nearly at summit. Because orange locos. <laughs> Oh, 
Oh yeah, there's one for the chat. What's your favourite livery and your least favourite livery? Matt, what's yours? I don't know. There's lots of different liveries that I've liked. Um, I mean, generally, I really like seeing some of the GBR F66s that have got all of the painted sides, like the London Underground ones, mm. uh, and like the MSC one with the drink cargo container painted on the side. I just like the um, the attention to detail on those and the fact they're just not a colour or a standard, you know, couple of lines and so forth. Um, I really like the pride liveries on the various trains. I really love the work that goes into mm. to making these trains colourful and stand out. Um, so, but uh, there's lots of really nice liveries. Maybe not so many of the modern liveries because they've necessarily dialed them down. Mm. I think my my favourite is either um, grey eastern blue and the lining. Or great northern green, again with his lining. I think my least favourite, um, I think it was probably National Express, to be perfectly honest. It wasn't really well, why did National Express actually, the, the grey and white? Yeah, I weren't really keen on that. Coming into Summit. And it's still pouring it down. And we're here. There you go. Oh, the Class 20 in London Transport really is fantastic, oh, yes. I can't wait for the Batman ones. They're going to be so good. I went, um, train. I did a train spotting stream from Clapham Station once. Mm. And, um, the, uh, I think the Transport for London 20 was, was in presence, um, then. Which one was it? Was it 227 or 189, I think it is the other one? I don't know. It was a lot. It was a red twenty. A long time ago now. <laughs> yeah, because there's two of them. Um, one is Sherlock Holmes, and the other one's Sir John Betjeman. I think it was Betjeman. You think it's Betjeman? Yeah. Yeah. Ever seen a real narrow gauge engine? Yeah, I went to have a ride on the Fastiniog. Done loads. I was. I went to one the the other week. Um, uh, Statfold, if anybody been to Statfold Barn, brilliant, definitely do it. Um, so many narrow gauge locos, it's incredible. Oh, I really enjoyed our run on the Fristinia, really nice. Yeah. So, there we go, oh yeah, thank you Pete, yeah, see, look, driven like a pro, there you go, I'm yeah, quite pleased no, with that. James knocked it out of the park this evening, well done Jamie. Thank you, thank you. Um, so there we go. Uh, mods, can you put the two links in the chat? I think that, I'm oh, sorry, I posted the first link. Um, so the first one was um, Wagons from Cardiff, I think it was. Um, and I can't remember the name of this one. I think this is uh, Mid Morning uh, Rail Tour, I think, this one. We have wheel spin and much speeding. Exactly! <laughs> Yeah, but at least I, I didn't blow the loco up. Trains and I do wheel spin and much speeding, so, <laughs> you know. There we go. We didn't say what he was a pro at. We just said he was driven like a pro. <laughs> Could be a professional knitter. I don't know. <laughs> That's true. It's true. <clears throat> driven exactly the way a professional knitter would drive a train. I, don't I might be, you know, making sweeping... Um, Assumptions there, but <laughs> right. There 
I think we found the end. Yeah. Uh, I think we have. Thanks very much for watching, everybody. Um, what's the next streams? Um, I'll explain some of this job. <laughs> uh, nice. <sighs> Kudos. Yeah. Uh, what's the next streams this week, Jamie? So, on the 15th, so tomorrow, uh, I am back with Nat. Um, Nat is driving. Will you um, be Nat? And I'm going to um, show you, or show Nat, um, and you'll, we'll be playing um, Great Western Express, and we'll go through the full cab. I think of both the 166. Might be the HST as well, depending on time. Um, but um, we'll go through the full cab, show... Um, all the ins and outs when you push in the emergency stop how to recover from an emergency stop all those sort of bits and pieces excellent so, so the good good starter stream there so if you're basically if you're new or you want a a, um, a, a refresher then uh, sounds like a uh, an excellent opportunity to uh, to pick some to, to get to look, have a look and also pick some brains tomorrow yep yeah and then i think sam is back on friday with a let's play uh, which oh, is awesome. Coastway. So, lovely. Excellent. Well, in that case, join them on uh, then these streams, then folks. And uh, otherwise, than that, uh, I will. Uh, I'm not on till next week now, so I will catch you later. Have a great time. Cheers, everybody. Thanks for watching. Bye bye. Bye. See you tomorrow.